Okay, so now we in uh, in production and operation management. This time around, we are now looking at uh, the master production schedule. Okay, so this one looks at um, uh, two components that are involved in production. So master production schedule looks at the the following. So we have the, the first one. We are talking about we talk about the loading of labors and the capacity. Okay. So what factors do we consider in production? Okay. Now here, since we talk about labor, so we have labor here and the, the capacity. Okay. So we look at the loading of hours and the capacity. So this one, the first aspect of it is called the rough cut capacity planning. So we have the labor and the capacity. So this is the first part of master production schedule where we look at the loading of labor hours and the capacity. So the first part of it is called a rough cut capacity planning. Okay, so now what is this rough cut capacity planning? So this is a planning where we compare the loading of the labor hours with capacity in each week. And for the total weeks, in order to determine if you have enough capacity to produce the MPS, and the, of course, we make some changes to the master production schedule. Okay, so for this rough cut planning, we'll understand it in detail as we look at an example, but the major aspect is that we just compare the loading of hours with capacity. Okay, so compare the loading of hours in each week with the capacity. Does that mean if we, the master schedule is feasible? Otherwise, you can make some changes uh, to the master schedule. Of course, see, you can even talk about maybe in the stadium, if the loading of um, those supporters, if it is 20,000, capacity is 20,000, and then you will entertain 40,000 people to watch a certain match, then of course, actually you can see that there's an overloading. Okay, so now you have to see in which week we had an overload and in which week we had an underload so that you can strike a balance so that you see how the feasibility of master schedule will be. So this is the first part of master production schedule. Of course, we get into the second part of it. It looks at the load sizing part. So the second part of the master MPS has four components, okay? So these four components are aggregate demand. So this is just simply the sum of demand. So this is it, the sum, by aggregate simply means sum of demand. Now this demand is coming, can come from various sources, okay? So you look at the, demand from the customer orders and branch warehouse or it can come from the market research orders or from the research and development so aggregate demand simply means so this is number one this is the order in which it's supposed to be this is number two okay so now i'll explain these ones in detail for this is second part of the master schedule and then the other one is it, the ending inventory. Now, this inventory is also called the stock. Now, first of all, we are still, still getting back to the second part here. So this is number A, the first part, which is the rough cut planning. And then we look at part B, which is it, the, this one is also called lot sizing part. So you see, also it's for lot size, lot sizing. Very, very important. So lot size, which is actually meaning production size in the production. That's why the term master production, this is where this one is coming from. So production size for the second part. Now, aggregate planning, this one, this one the first, the second part of MPS, which we talk, we're talking about aggregate demand. So the, the demand coming from various sources, like I mentioned, from maybe the branch warehouse orders, the market research orders, the research and development orders, and all that. So you aggregate the demand. And then if the demand is there, then you look at how many units of stock have you started with. That's the beginning stock, which is also called on hand. So this one is also called 
on hand. So beginning stock also called on hand. Okay. So what happens here is that you look at what you have, what you have started with, then plus what you are going to produce, which is the word production, or which is also called lot size. And then we have the last part of it for this one. This is the order in which things are supposed to be presented. This one for the second part of it. And then this is it. Ending inventory, or simply call, you can call it the closing stock. So ending inventory or closing, closing stock. Okay, so you should know because what is important here on this second part is that you need to to know the demand for customers. Customers, let's say customers are demanding hundred units of commodity. Customers they need hundred units of commodity. Then you have started the business with only 20 units, but customers, they need 100 units. So you have started with 20 units. So you can know what you need to produce so that you meet the demand. So the lot size is a production size. So, so meaning what you have started with plus what you have produced, you add these two. So these two is a plus. So here you add these two, the beginning stock, plus the production, then minus C, the demand, so you know what you're going to close with. So the beginning stock, then plus how much you need to produce, then minus what customers need, which is the demand units, then you are going to, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. Okay, so this is what we're saying. So we are saying our closing inventory will be as a result of the beginning stock or on the hand, then plus the production, then minus the demand, then you are going to have what you are going to close with, which is the, the closing inventory. Now, the rule for this second part of the master schedule is that inventory level, inventory level either ending or beginning stock, Okay, should not fall below the safety stock. So whatever you are keeping should not fall below the buffer stock that you are keeping for security reasons. Okay, uh, if inventory falls below safety stock, that's a condition, that's a rule for this second part of the master schedule, this one. So the inventory level is at the beginning or ending stock should not fall below the safety stock levels. So if inventory four is below safety stock, then we require production, which is the road size. Okay. So, so just about the rough cut planning and the second part, which is the road sizing part, marks the end of the master shape. This is the shortest possible topic that you find in um, production and operation management, which is POM. So now what is going to happen here? We should get into an example where you need to understand both the rough cut planning and then the lot sizing part of it, which has the four components, which are very important uh, components that you need to understand. So we get to the example. Okay. So a firm produces one product on a produce to stock basis. So when they say they produce to stock, means that even if there's no customer, um, the firm should actually just produce to keep they just produce to keep right that's the meaning of produce to to stock so meaning whether there is no customer you only produce to stock those that's meaning that you just produce and keep the stock okay maybe in the warehouse but there are also as sometimes where you look at the like firm should produce uh, as per order so when there's an order that's when they can only uh, produce Okay, so this is it, um, what goes on. So here yeah, saying the film produces one product on a produce to stock basis. The demand for this product comes from various few different sources. 
and the demand estimates for the next four weeks are given us. So this question came from uh, the pamphlet. If you take the pamphlet, you are going to find it. Uh, it's just a, a build up, which is this one. So this is the same question from the pamphlet that came from here. So the firm produces one product from the produce to stock basis. Okay. And then the demand for this product comes from all different fuel sources, which is just this one. So the, the, the source for the demand came from intra-company orders, the warehouse orders, the research and development orders, like I mentioned, the demand can come from various sources. And then we are from the customer. We have these, these sources with where demand is coming from. So already when you have this, you should know that the, we should look at the, the second part of um, the master schedule, which is um, which is um, the the rough cut planning. Okay, so which is the rough cut planning, the one I mentioned. So now, if you look at this, the self talk for this product is 30, 30 units, and the fixed load size is here. 50 units. So we have those, that's a, the safety stock is 30 units and a fixed load size, which is a production size is 50 units. Okay. The beginning inventory is 50 units. Prepare the master schedule for this product. Okay. So now the, the first thing that we needs to be done here is to identify the safety stock, the load sizing and beginning inventory. Okay, so if we come here on the solution now, the stuff talk for this product is 30 units, the fixed load size is 50 units, the beginning inventory is 50 units, then prepare the master schedule for this product. So the first thing to do here is to aggregate the demand. So the go for, go for the solution here, go for the four components. So the first one is aggregate demand, you go for beginning inventory, required production and ending in inventory. These are the, when you have the load sizing part of it, it means we are in production, the second part of the master schedule, which I mentioned about, which has these four components, okay, with this one. So what is happening now? We are going to aggregate the demand. So you sum up the demand for this week, then this week, this week, and this week. So you find the aggregate demand. So demand here, you aggregate to, to give us 50, just aggregate demand, which is this one, for, so if, for each week. So this is it, a 10 plus 10 plus 30, that is 50. That's where the 50 is coming from. Then the other one here, it will be 45, that's where it's coming from. Then the other one here is 25, that's where that one is coming from. Then the other one here is 50, that's where the aggregate demand is coming from. Now, beginning stock, you go back to the question. Beginning stock is it, we are following the order the one that I gave here, this order. So beginning stock, okay, that's the second component. All right, so now here, the beginning stock is um, is 50 units, okay? Now, there's a rule here that I mentioned to say, the major rule for this part is that inventory level, either ending or beginning stock should not fall below the safety stock. So safety stock is a guiding point here. So safety stock is the the, uh, the limiting factor, so to speak. Uh, so inventory should, should not fall below the safety stock. So either ending or beginning stock should not fall. Either ending or beginning stock should not fall below the safety stock. If that happens, then the firm should require the lot size of production size. So you compare. You come here and then we check. Beginning stock is fifty. Of course, this is the demand. Customers, they demand 50 units and the beginning stock is 50. So meaning we are able to meet our demand quite all right. But if you say beginning is 50, demand is 50, you are going to remain with zero. Now that zero will actually distort the meaning of the statement of the rule that we are, you know, which is here. The rule is that the inventory level should not fall below the safety stock. So in our question, the self to stock has been given, self to stock is 30 units. So now the fixed load size is 50 units. 
So whatever we are doing, we should produce the fixed production is 50 units. So if 50 units are not enough, you can produce 100 units. So it's more like you're producing in a batches of 50. So 50 is not enough, you can produce 100 units. 100 units not enough, can produce 150 units. So um, here, the reason why there is a production of 50 is because quite right, we can meet our demand because we have the 50 units to meet the demand of 50 or men with zero. But that rule will be distorted then. That's why we have to require the fixed batch, fixed production batch of 50 units. That's what it says here, the fixed load size of uh, 50 units. So that's why we have to produce the 50 units because it would have remained with zero and the, our, our buffer stock is dead units. Safety stock is, inventory should not fall below safety. So our ending stock, because you are simply saying our ending stock is equal to beginning stock. So when you add these two, beginning plus production, beginning plus production, then minus, so these two is a plus, you add these, these two minus the demand, that's when you get the ending stock. So beginning, these two, then plus the production minus C. So meaning these two plus C, beginning plus production minus the demand, you get the ending stock. Now, this ending stock is the beginning stock for the next period. So the ending stock for the period is the beginning stock for the other period. Whatever you close up to get to deal with should be the beginning for the next day. Again, we say 50, quite right, we have 50 to meet the demand of 45. Yes, we can. But what is going to happen is we are going to remain with a five as the on hand, which is a closing inventory. Now that five will not be enough because the five is too little because the safety stock is 30 units as a buffer stock. So we are still to produce the batch, fixed batch of 50 units because we are producing in the fixed batch of low fixed load size of 50 units. So this is the reason why we are to produce uh, again the 50 here. So a 50 and the, this beginning stock of 50 is giving us a 100 when you add these two. So this one plus this one, we we'll get a 100. 100 to meet the demand, yes we can, we are going to remain with 55. So 55 is the ending stock, which will be the beginning stock for this, uh, this other period. Now this 55, we have to meet the demand of 25. Customers, yes, they are demanding 25 boxes of tomatoes and we have one hand of 55. Yes, we can, here we, we are going to remain with that, so it's okay, we can't produce because we are at par with it. our safety, safety stock. Inventory should not fall below safety. So this one is at par. So this one is at par with safety. So this is at par, at par, okay, with the safety stock, okay? So this is okay. So this one, is ending stock, which will be the beginning stock. So this one, to meet the demand, we can't even meet the demand because we are under pressure. This is 30 to meet the demand of 50, we are under pressure. So we are supposed to produce the fixed batch of 50 units. So when we produce the fixed batch of 50, then we are going to have 80 units to be all together to meet the demand of 50, we will remain with it. Um, of that. So this is the, the load sizing part of a master schedule, which is the second part of it that I explained here, which has the four components. The second part has these components here. Okay. So um, here, the according to the rule, the game is at the inventory level should not fall below the safety stock levels. So we require master schedule in week in week one. So we require production in week one, week three, 
then you also require production in week four. So this is when we require the master sheet. So we can we just require production in week one, we require production in week two, and also require production in week week four. All right, so this is about the, the load sizing part of master schedule, which is the second part of it. So we need to go now and look at the first part of it. So it's just the order that we started from the second one, but it, we still have to go to the, the rough cut planning, which is the first part of the master schedule. Now, the rough cut planning compares the loading of labor hours in each week and for the total weeks in order to determine if you have enough capacity to produce the MPS and make some changes to the master schedule. So you just simply compare the loading of hours with capacity in each week. Okay. So now we can go to an example here where we need to look at um, the rough cut planning. So this also is coming from the, the pamphlet. So given the following production schedule of two ends A and B, so we have end item A. So we have this company they are operating six weeks. So the production in of this end item A in week one is 10, was a production 20, 20, 10, 13. These are the production of item A and item B, these are productions. So we need production of that. Now, here there is a guide. Assembly time required for product A is two hours. So to produce a unit of A, we need two hours. To produce a unit of B, we require three hours. So the total assembly time available per week is 100 hours. So we can find the loading of hours here. So meaning prepare a rough cut capacity plan for assembly in this production schedule and recommend whether or there should be any changes made to the production stage. So on the solution, we need to go and check the loading hours of A. So loading hours of A, for production per hour of A is two hours. Okay, the unit is two hours, for that of B is three hours. So meaning that we are going to find the total loading of A, simply multiplying each of these in the way they are by two hours. Okay. We are, each product A requires two hours to be produced. Each product B requires three hours to be produced. So we're supposed to multiply each of these products A by two hours, B is by three hours. So meaning our this is to be 10 by two, 20 by two. So these figures, they are actually the ones given in the table here above. So we're multiplying each of them by two. So this one by two, by two, by two, by two, by two, that's the loading hours of A. So that you find the total loading, the total production hours that are there for A. Because one product requires two hours. And then we have produced these units in the various weeks. Getting to B, the same, you multiply by three for each of them. So the total loading, we simply add this one plus this one. That's the loading. Here it will be this one and this one. But don't forget, we have our weekly capacity of 100 hours. So per week, we have 100 hours. So we have that one, that one. So even here, you see 40 and 60. Then here, it will be 20 and 30. Then here, it will be uh, 60 and 60. And then here, it will be 20 and 90. So the, the total loading, you add these. You get 8 here, 100 here. 100 here, 50 here, 120, and 110, simply by adding these ones. Now, we need to compare the loading of hours with capacity. That's the term rough cut planning. So here, we just compare the loading of hours with capacity in each week and for the total week. So here, this is the loading of hours, that one. Here, the loading of hours. But the weekly capacity is 100 hours, OK? So here, we are OK. Because we are, we have a total loading of 80 and the capacity is 100, which is okay. Here we are at power with capacity. Then here also we are at power with capacity. Here we are underload, we have underload here. Here we have overloading. And then here we have overloading. Okay. So this is 120. 
So we have the overloading here, and then here we have overloading. So here we have underload of 20. So here we have a underload of, of 50, but here we have the overload of 20, an overload of 20. So if you exceed the capacity, then that's not okay. So you can strike a balance to find where you can remove some hours here to where you have the, we have, so you can recommend what to do, okay? So you are comparing to see the total. So meaning you can even find the total loading here. Okay, so here you can find the total loading, which will give us, a, and then here it will be 600, which means, a, then the other one, our capacity, you can add 80 plus 100, then plus 100, then plus 50, then plus 120, then plus 110. So you have a five skister here. So we have five skister on this one. So quite all right, we have enough capacity to produce the MPS. Because total capacity is this one compared with the loading of this one. Okay. So we have enough capacity to produce the MPS. Okay that we have a problem, okay? So here, recommendation, move some labor hours from week five and six where we have overloading five and so, but you can be precise. You can move the 20, 20 hours here. You can take them, all of them to week one, so it can balance up with this one. There's no problem. Or you can move the 20 hours from here. Other recommendations in the examiner can actually accept. We're trying to track a balance. We're trying to actually avoid the overloads. So you can yeah, remove 20 hours from week five and then 10 hours from week six, both from here and did from five and six, and you can take all of them to, to week four. So meaning week four would have eight hours in total, which will still strike a balance. What we're trying to avoid is the overloading. So recommendation can be N over, you can even take maybe 10 hours from here, that's another option, 10 hours from week six, you take them to week one, and then the 20 hours from week five, you can take them to week four, it will start try to balance so that you are avoiding overloading. But all in all, we have enough capacity to produce the MPS. So recommendation, so we can move some labor hours from week five and six where we have overloading to either week one and four where we have the underloading so that the loading of hours does not exceed the capacity. Okay, so this is the second part of the master schedule, okay? So there are two parts here that are involved, uh, just the rough cut planning and the other one we have looked at um, the road sizing part of it. So let's get it into detail of example two. This is we're still here looking at this part, the second part, this is example two on the, on the rough cut planning. So a company manufactures barcode scanners. So this is also coming from the, the pamphlet. So all these questions, they came from the pamphlet and uh, from even previous past papers, as we go, as we revise, we'll be able to see. So company manufactures back with the scanners when they produce by as per order basis. So they are producing as per order. If there's no order, they cannot produce. Okay. So the company manufactures back the three models of scanners on the same assembly line. The final assembly has twenty thousand hours of weighted capacity. The six week MPS and the final assembly standard well, for each model are you have these ones here. So final assembly standard, we have 25 hours that are required to produce a scanner A, and then 20 hours per scanner. So, so to produce a scanner B, we are talking about 30 hours. Scanner C, 35 hours. So, and the weekly capacity is 20,000 hours. So in each week, we have 20,000 hours. So meaning co compute the actual final assembly hours required at the plant in each week, and for the total six weeks to produce the MPS. Compare the loading to labor hours capacity in each week. So this is also rough cut planning. Okay. Now, does enough production capacity exist to produce the MPS? What changes to MPS would you recommend? So this marks the end. It's just also the rough cut planning that we are actually talking about. So to find the loading hours of A, we're supposed to multiply. Okay, this is production of 200 scanners in week one. So you need to multiply 200 by 25, 150 by the same way as at the previous example from looking at so that we actually find the total loading hours of A. 
and find the total loading hours of B by multiplying each of these by 30 and total uh, loading of, um, of C by multiplying each of these by 35. So this is what happened to the solution here. So we just multiply each of them. We are getting these figures similar to the one we are from, from looking at. And then you find the total loading of this one. And then which weekly capacity is it? These are 20,000 per week. So this is a total loading as per each week. Then there's need to find, so the, the, actually you compare this one and this one. So we have just computed the loading per week for each scanner, total loading, okay? And then there's a need now to say, yes, there is enough production capacity for so answering B. There's enough production capacity to produce the MPS because total capacity is 120,000 hours compared with the loading of 109,250 hours. All right, so this we have answered there's enough capacity. Now we can we can, we can now schedule, we can move some labors, <coughs> excuse me, from some weeks where we have the overloading, so that is in week three, the three, four, and six, to either week one, two, and five, where we have the underloading. So the loading of labor hours does not exceed capacity. So we just need to check where we can move. Here we have the overloading. Here we have the overloading. Here we have the overloading. So we can strike a balance or if the capacity is 20,000, so you can move two, five hours from here to either we keep where we have the underloading. And you can move the 750 hours here and 750 hours from here. Both of them, we can take them maybe to week, to week what? To week two. So any other recommendation, the examiner can accept. We can move the two seven fifty hours from me and seven fifty hours from me. We can take them to week five. We have the underloading, or we can move the two five hours from me, and we actually take them to week one. So this marks the end of uh, the master production schedule. So we will just get into detail of it uh, as we revise. Any question, please. Any question? I'm okay. <laughs>